All right, we are back for round two on the play this time. Uh, this is basically a six lander. I don't think you can keep it, even though we have if near dead lands. Uh, we have no threats. Uh, yeah, I think it's a mulligan. This one is fine. This amount of hands are fairly matchup dependent. This one is fine against a pretty big amount of things. Ooh, group breaker. All right, all right. I see you. Uh, I think we'll try to go constrictor first. This way we might get a, a bigger ballista. Zombie is your most difficult matchup, basically. You are not really supposed to win against zombie unless things get really go go uh, unless things go really well for you and he, us mulliganing into them having the nut draw <laughs> basically is probably gonna mean we will lose so I think we need to belly stuff for four uh, we are not really getting anywhere getting a getting a nice two for one is, is gonna be the way we can maybe come back in this game which is looking pretty cream um Yeah, this is going to be difficult. But zombie is difficult in general, and Crypt Breaker is pretty much the last card you want to see. And yeah, Crypt Breaker plus Crypt Breaker fa failed pushes their best draw against us by, by miles. Relentless Dead. Don't really want them to draw a card. It's just going to blow up one of this guy. Having a body sound to the battlefield is still something threatening that they might need to deal with anyway, so even though I'm I'm kinda losing a two for one by killing the creep breaker, this will still get a two for one most likely. As we will get to either, you know, make it bigger later on. Or um They will be forced to use a reinvol on it, so I think we'll kill that now. In case they are super flooded and they actually wanna discard. They might wanna use the first ability, which is sometimes re relevant, obviously. <coughs> the problem is since because we mulligan into a kind of a medium and we don't have a lot of pressure and we might just get killed by the combina combination of Relentless Dead plus uh, a Lord or Liliana Mastery could be tough to beat at this point. Yeah, that, that was to be expected. So we still got the 2 for 1 except it's not really a 2 for 1 because of the Dark Salvation. And Ezer Hub was not the card the card I was hoping to draw here. <laughs> but next turn they would probably go land mastery and at this point we are in huge trouble. Uh this kinda holds the other token as a 3-4, but they probably have some more reinvol. And even if they don't, relentless that is still a lot of pressure. This matchup is very, very difficult. Pre-board and post-board it doesn't get a lot better. It's a little bit draw dependent though, because if you have a good draw and they are a little bit short on reinvol, you will win fairly easily. And sometimes this happens, but zombie deck is still packing so much reinvol that in general they will have ways to answer with your things and they have a little bit more two for ones, so it's it's very difficult. Metallic mimic, sure. Not the most threatening thing. Flooding, on the other hand, <laughs> is definitely uh, threatening. Oh my god. Let's just blow up that thing. There are some matchups where you can afford to flood a little bit more than other. Zombie is really not the case. Zombie is really about, you know, getting in value and it's really a difficult one. And if you mulligan on the play and 
and flood is like it's almost zero percent chance to win. If they play mastery, this is over. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, we can try, but. They can deadlands our green belt rampager and start to. Start to beat down with other zombies too. This matchup is difficult, but honestly, if you think about it, here if I had drawn two spells instead of two land, we would still be in potentially a decent shape. Um, but things get so tough pretty quickly, potentially. It's a little bit easier for the, for them to uh, do things that get out of hand than it is for us. Like we rely on creature that if they kill, you know, uh, it's over. Like if they get rid of a, a cub, then you know we don't really have any more pressure. Whereas they rely on creatures, but they have a little bit of card advantage, and you know they can play a creep breaker and draw a card right away. Sometimes there's a couple of things like that they can do. Uh, in general, they have a, a lot more. Uh, it's easier for them to do annoying thing. I think is the main uh, thing about this matchup. All right. Uh, definitely want more more removal against zombies. Not a big fan of the the Ezerborn. I don't think they're great. Do want my Gonti, the expertise. Sky Sovereign is great. Um, Nixilis is medium. Terrorless Tracker is fine. Harvester is surprisingly good. They ha they have hard time dealing with vehicles. Um, yeah. Best area I haven't tried, but I think it's still a bit too slow. Probably never to return is decent. The thing is, we have a lot of things we can bring in, but. Sending in out stuff is, is is difficult in this matchup. Usually get one gear hulk when I'm bringing in more four five drop. Uh, but gear hulk usually quite great as making a very weak creature can be tough for them to deal with. Maybe we don't play up next though. <sighs> The Cubs are n the the Rampagers, sorry, are not that good in this matchup. I think we really want things that can get out of hand or very threatening creatures or removal. This is one of the best cards in some matchup, like control against control. It's great against mono red. It's great, but in the mirror and against zombie, where it's a little bit more about generating value, I haven't been super impressed by these. Nisa is fine on the play. It'll be worse on the draw. You want the blossoming defenses. Uh, it's difficult, it's difficult. Maybe you don't need that many grasps. Yeah. Still unsure about how should sideboard against some beats. Really a difficult matchup, and they can have some pretty aggressive draw too, so you cannot just, you know, going all on the late game. Uh, yeah, it is, it's not an easy one, for sure. Uh, hand is pretty good. I like it quite a bit. And they don't have a turn one, cool. Well, they might just have a... Uh, a fatal push here. Looks like they do. No? Okay, cool. I like that. Nothing. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, I guess let's attack and see what happens. Kind of wanted the energy for breathing an Hydra and Siphoner, so if they don't do anything, I'm just gonna <coughs> deal my damage. Uh, 
interesting spot. <clears throat> I think I'm pretty happy to start drawing cards if they don't have removal. Nisa is fine, but I don't think it's a. I mean, it's a little bit more resilient to removal, but it looks like they don't have a removal anyway, so I'd rather draw a card. That's nasty. Don't really think we want to play that right now, though. And it's close, though, because this is this makes us this makes our cub a ten ten basically. And they usually have one or two never to return post board, but they don't have a lot of free vault to deal with really big creatures. I think we can wait a little though and try to get value of the tracker. And then next turn we can play Constrictor and sack the clue, you know, which is a better use of our mana. I think for now we'll just put one counter. But you, if you look at that, if they have a little bit of a slow draw, they can get overrun pretty quickly. Yeah, sure. Like even Dark, even though Dark Salvation is their best card in the matchup, you know it's not going well for them here. Let's draw and see. Grasp. Okay, not bad. Alright. Mm-hmm. Well, they update the push, okay. Probably should have wait before using that, because I might have pumped my cub. Now I, I get to keep the energy. I'm not sure I agree with that move. Okay, the Colossus is a card you must kill when you see it pretty much. The question is how do we do it? I think we use never to return. I don't think Planeswalker are super threatening in this matchup and it uses the mana better. And maybe we can later on play Nisa plus Grasp. Mastery, I assume. Yeah. Well, we had a good draw. They were lacking removal early on, and somehow we are still. We are not in the best spot here. I mean, I think we were doing fine, but. This is not, like, as good as it could have been, should have been. If they play another mastery, we are kind of getting overwhelmed. They have a couple of cards that are really tough to beat. Like if they draw two or three Dark Salvation, two or three mastery, things becomes really difficult. Hmm, another cub. That's 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 pretty good. And really that is atrocious to play against. Uh, probably just play a Nisa. 
I was just gonna force them to do something, most likely. Next turn we can go Cub plus, plus Grasp or Gear Hulk, we have another Nisa. I think at this point our plan is just to maybe stall a little bit the board and try to build a, an army or a four or five really big creature. Which should be fairly easy to do if the snake doesn't die. We have quite a lot of gas in hand. What's going on, man? What are you thinking about? Can we play? Hello? If they are, if they have the rainbow they <laughs> they are thinking about using, they can just wait to see which Nisa ability I use. So I'm not sure what's going on here. So we want to return the their graph colossus before they. You know, if we think the relentless lead is gonna die, this is pretty important to do. What is going on, man? Hello? Is someone? Someone's here? Are we playing magic? This game is going to be difficult. Yeah, it's pretty crazy because we had a good draw and the game is still somewhat difficult. Relentless Dead is really good against the mid-range deck like we are playing. So, if the Nisa have a resolve, which you know it should, unless they disconnected. What do we do? I think we make a token, then they get to attack us with Relentless Dead. We don't really want it to die because if it dies, it brings back the Colossus and then it's, they are going to play the Relentless Dead themse themselves and we are going to lose some... Um, uh, they, they are going to get to play a bunch of zombies basically, but I think... It's perfectly fine to let Nisa go down to uh to one. It's also let us attack them. If they don't have the relentless dead back to block. I will see. We shall see. Maybe. Hopefully this is just them using Deadlands and not another Mastery. Another Mastery is going to be very tough to beat. What the hell happened? Why, why wasn't I able to answer anything here? And why putting two counter on a two three killed it? What? Okay, okay, so it, it also makes more counter, so you can kill it with Deadland. Interesting, I did not know that. However, I would have done something, probably put a couple counter on high drive. Oh, they're attacking me here? Whoa, that's very aggressive. 
I'm gonna eat one one of the zombie. Yeah, I would have put a counter here because I wanted two counter, not just one. Interesting thing. I did not notice boosted the counter of the open two. Cool, cool, cool. But yeah, it's kind of weird. I don't think I have sixth or anything, and still I lost my uh, my turn basically. So strange. We could play Cub, Ballista, and put a counter on everybody. That's fine, I don't think we are really grasping anything this turn. I don't think we need to do that. Then they can spend their turn using the If Near Deadlands and the Ballista, though. Which would be... Actually fine, I believe. They don't really get any good attack though, which is good for us. <laughs> yeah, I think this is fine. I did not quite get that attack. Like, they only dealt, what? Six damage and they lost a creature in the process. Or, you know, traded one of their zombies for a plant token. That doesn't seem super great. So I probably need to if near that land the Ballista, but then they have no good attack and they're probably not doing anything else. So I'm, I'm quite fine with that. Yeah. Alright, I don't know why the open why the open is playing this slowly, it's a little bit boring to be honest. Deadlands, okay, so I can play my gear hulk. Not even sure it's the line though. I think one thing we really wanna do is get rid of that Colossus in the graveyard. Before we start to attack. We could make an 8 8 gear hulk. Maybe that's a fine line actually. Yeah. Actually, yeah, let's do that. Huge trampler, they have. No removal in him, most likely. And pretty much every creature we have is lethal at that point. So they need to block. Next turn they will need to block the cub. They will need to block the Hydra because both are lethal and they will need to put enough toughness in front of the Gear Hulk. And we have a graph, so this should do the trick. 
I believe. Poosh. That's cool. That's pretty good. Yeah, let's put a counter on everybody. Let's kill that. See what they want to do about it. They probably cannot afford to tap stuff. And then attack. I'm pretty sure they are just very dead. No matter what, but we'll see. If anything, the grasp should help us killing them. Okay. All right, we got there. Kind of a weird game. Uh, they had kind of a slow start, but with two salvation. Yeah, they have they have something like about between ten and twenty cards that are really annoying to deal with, and that's a lot. That's really a lot. Uh, I, I I like missile a little bit less on the draw. I think I could use a little bit more reinvol maybe. And then do we try it up bestiary? Not sure it's gonna be great. I haven't played with that card against zombie, but games can get pretty grindy, especially post board with the amount of reinvol. Hmm. Nah. Still don't think I like that. Seems a little bit underwhelming. Harvester is not amazing, but the fact that they have almost nothing to deal with it is really cool. Like, unless you were blocking with it, then they can probably grasp of darkness or do something post combat. But if you are attacking with it, there's really, really not a ton they can do. Unless they get one of their creatures dead during your turn, then they can fatal push. But most of their removal is sorcery speed or doesn't get the five toughness, toughness of the uh, harvester. Flagship is also amazing. Like this is one of the way we, you can turn this matchup into from pretty difficult and very tough to actually completely winnable. And by the way, I wonder if I will not bring in two sky sovereign instead of one sky sovereign and one omnixis because omnixis has been fairly underwhelming. Uh, whereas sky sovereign is just amazing in the mirror. Amazing against zombies. I think this could be one change. Because I'm just gonna write that down. Sometimes, you know, I just write down things. Um, so make sure I don't forget. I'm not sure if the opponent is doing something else in the meantime, but. They've been playing super slowly and it's been super annoying, not gonna lie. Hopefully we get them to play at a decent pace here. I like the combo of an early grass plus a late game Sky Sovereign. Uh, hopefully it's gonna be good. Okay, okay, Constrictor is not bad. Definitely gonna blow up the Creep Breaker if we can next turn. No attack. Oh, they wanna make a zombie, I guess. Sure. Then it's even better, like if you have nothing better to do than that. Discarding a lord? Are they mana screwed? I don't know, I, I'm not a zombie player myself, so don't think I I will not say I know the deck very well, but it seems weird to discard a lord to make a 2 2, unless you are mana screwed. Oh, no, not another creep breaker, please. Well, the good news is that they're stuck on land. Bad news is that we don't have a, a reinvol for the second grip breaker right now, so this could go wrong pretty quickly. Like if you let them draw a couple cards with grip breaker, it's very quickly game over, and we need to draw land pretty badly with this hand. 
But if we do, I think we're if there's like land land on top of library uh, of our library, I think we win. Because if they get a little bit stuck on land and we get to play Sky Sovereign fairly early in their development, it's pretty good. That's bad on the other hand. The the relentless dead here. That's really bad for us. Ah uh, no. No. We don't want to miss land drop, please. Uh, that's real bad. We needed this land really badly. Ah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they draw creep breakers, it's tough. When they draw these and you don't have the removal. Yeah, they have their push. That's the reason why I did not attack with Plant Token, by the way. Yeah, Crypt Breaker is so annoying. And here they are a little bit mana screwed, hopefully. Uh, I mean, luckily for us, but... Yeah, we are mana screwed too. Like here, if we had drawn two lands in a row, we would play Sky Sovereign, blob the Crypt Breaker, and we would be in an amazing shape, but here we are probably losing, unfortunately. It's looking super green. I think we kept three land too, so it really feels bad. Interesting, so they choose not... They could have attacked me for free pre-match, for three damage, but they choose not to. They just gave up on three damage. Uh, that's strange. I mean, maybe they wanted to keep their fatal proof for something better, but seems like a strange thing to do. The good, the kind of good news is that they need to pressure Nisa, so they can afford to draw too much with Creep Breaker, which is kind of a good for us, but still, I don't like how this is going. Probably just gonna play Gaunti in case they have a Grasp of Darkness because they could kill the, um, the Eidras. Oh, we kinda missed here. Probably gonna be Colossus, but... Uh, it's probably wrong, actually. This card just doesn't do anything for us. Pretty much want to hit a Revol when you do that, and we missed. I think if we draw land next turn and if we can blow up the Crypt Breaker, we are still in potentially decent shape as they they are really stuck on land, but we really need to do that fairly quickly, especially since we miss with Gonti. Dark Salvation, my Gonti. That's actually fine. I mean, Nisa is gonna die, but. Nisa was just mostly here to buy time. I don't think we care that much about Nisa. Land? Almost. Almost. Well, let's drop that and pass. Well, the fact that they were able to... That, that they are full grip of card in hand and that they were able to draw a bit with Creep Breaker might make things super difficult still. But Sky Sovereign is a three turn clock which they can't really interact with. Oh man, three creep breakers? Ugh, god. That's nasty. Oh boy. Let's see if the Sky Sovereign can do miracles because this is pretty much what we need now. Uh, goddamn miracle. The good news is that, again, they, they can hardly interact with it. They don't really have enough, the pressure, I think, to just kill us right away. Like, we have a decent amount of blocker. We are at 16. They can't really interact with Idras or Sky Sovereign. So, maybe this will do the trick, I don't know. I should have picked Dreadwonder. 
a 2 1 would be better. The thing I don't like about picking Dread Wanderer though is that when it dies, it's gonna get in their graveyard and it's basically gonna give them value. And this is something I'd rather not have happening. This game is going to be very close. Because now they have the mana to develop their board and they can probably apply quite a lot of pressure. I assume they have some really strong cards. Ugh. Don't have a force... No, they... they of, of course! Of course! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the the one combo we really not wanted to see this turn, basically. And I don't know how we are gonna beat it. Oh boy. Yeah. One of the things that makes this matchup super difficult for me is that I feel like each time I'm playing against Zombie, they really draw their four, four or three Creep Breaker in their top 15 card. I don't know how, but it's always like that. <laughs> okay, well, we try to do the best we can, I guess. Thing is, they they assemble such a powerful board right now that I don't really know if we are going anywhere. I wonder if we don't blow up the Relentless Dead here. They go to 9. Because they cannot afford to draw much more anyway. And killing that when they don't have any mana is pretty good. It's gonna be very close. I think if we draw, well, if we draw, um, yeah, sure. If we draw Blossom Defense, we can just kill them next turn. But otherwise, we might be a bit short on, on time, because I think they'll assemble such a big army that they might just get to one-shot us before we can kill them. It's gonna be very close. The thing is, they can't really afford to attack next turn right away. I don't think they can. Uh, and we have to Hydra to protect ourselves. I'm not sure if we should play the Blooming March, but I don't think we'll lose match by doing that. Yeah, there's a chance we wanna go. If near Deadland, one of their Dude plus cast Diagraph Colossus if we draw land and then tap land. Yeah, that could be the difference between having enough blocker or not. Oh boy, oh boy. If they have another zombie, which they most likely do, then this is probably gonna be enough stuff to kill us. If they go play another zombie and on, on the turn before they kill us, they just go for the... Um, for the Lord. Chump. So if you block here, here, and two zombies, uh, it's gonna be very difficult, I think. Tireless tracker. I think we'll have enough blocker. No reason to kill the Crypt Breaker, they can't really draw anymore with these anymore. So I'll we'll just blow up one of the zombies. Mm -hmm. So let's imagine they play Mastery next turn, or any Lord. We have we'll have four blocker, so we can block here, here, two dude, take three. I think we I think we are winning that one actually somehow. There's maybe a couple of combination of card that kills us, but I think we have a pretty good shot at winning. Just because of Sky Sovereign, this is the only card that you know can save us here.
There's a chance they go Grasp of Darkness on that to save a bit of life, but it doesn't change the clock there, till then next turn. They get to Creep Breaker a little bit more, but I think they will be short on mana because again, I guess Double Lord kill... It does Double Lord even kill me because their token and the battlefield tap, so we don't care about these. Then we can have one, two, three, four block, and this is eight, 10, 12, so I, even Double Lord do doesn't kill me at this point. So I'm not sure what they need to come back. Maybe I'm missing a couple things. Maybe they have an answer to Sky Sovereign, but I think they should do the trick. I guess they could draw their own Sky Sovereign and be able to block with it. That's something they could have. They, the thing is they discarded one early on, so I'm not sure that... Maybe they have two, I don't know. They wouldn't need to have two and to draw the other one. Otherwise, I don't think they have the, the power to overcome this board. But if they do have another Sky Sovereign, they win, I think. Because then you can trade Sky Sovereign and their board is 10 times better than my board. This might be their only out. But if they play some removal, they, the thing is they cannot really deal with Hydra's. If they play some Lord, even two Lord is not going to give them enough power as we saw. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, this seems like a pretty desperate move. Probably should have drawn before playing the Lord in case they draw their second Sky Sovereign if they do have one. But again, I think unless they do have specifically that, there's nothing they can do to to push the damage through before we kill them with a the flyer. So I think we are winning, but again, this is not really a matchup we are supposed to win. I mean, it's not like it's not like super bad, like 70% for them, 30 for us. I think it's slightly better than that. But... Uh, still pretty atrocious. So I guess I might have drawn another Grasp of Darkness here. As we drew Never to Return. Which is gonna give us more blocker and clear something. <sighs> they do have a lot of zombies though. I mean, I don't see any reason not to go for the kill. The question is, do we attack with some other creatures for some reason? I don't think we do. They can make some double block, it's just not going to be very helpful. Mm. What happens if we never to return one of the Colossus? They have five blocker, we can clear one. They have four blocker, they can still block everything on the ground, so... I guess a line. Do we do that and attack with Quagmire? However, if they somehow have. Yeah, the thing is, we could in theory kill them by using Never to Return, Animating Quagmire, getting rid of two blocker. They only have four blocker on ground. We'll have four at five attacker on ground plus its Sky Sovereign, which, if it gets grasped, deals still two, so they. They go down to one and they take one of the ground attacker and they die. The thing is, if they somehow have Grasp of Darkness plus Fatal Push, we lose on the spot. Because they kill both things and then they swing back and we die. It's not very likely that they have that, especially since they already played two push. But who knows? I mean, they could have a push in hand. And if we just kill a Colossus and Lord of the Accursed, then. and we keep. what? Five blocker back. We can block here. Plus all these zombies, this will be gone, so we take 
most likely six if they have another lord. Imagine they, they have two more lords somehow. That's the worst case scenario. So we block here plus four other dudes. No, th th this we kill that. <sighs> block here plus four other dudes. This is four, this is eight. This is 14 if they have two other lord next turn. So I think, if, again, even if the w in the worst case scenario, we still don't die. So I don't think we are supposed to go for the kill here because again, the fatal push can mean we lose. Whereas if we play defensively, I don't think they have a combination of, a combination of card that kills us unless they have another Sky Sovereign, which they just top deck. I assume they have the grasp here. Or maybe they were just playing with my nerves. Alright. Well now if they even if they have grasp they they die. So I don't know what they can top deck. Alright, well they did not have the grasp anyway. So we got there. But I think here, even though you can go for the kill through through grasp, if they have grasp and fatal push you lose, so you probably should just uh wait since there's not nothing they can really do to kill us unless they have a second sky sovereign. Alright! We got there, that was pretty intense. Pretty tough matchup. Uh but Sky Sovereign did the job and I kinda want two in the side. This card is just so good against zombie. Whereas Omnixis is not that great in any matchup right now. So I think we'll do that. Alright, that was round two. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and see you for round three.